Hello and welcome to this edition of FYI Weekly, your official source for the latest news and information from the City of Greensboro. The 2020 Census is coming in March. The Census gives the federal government an updated snapshot of the services and facilities needed in the community and how much funding is required to maintain them. The Census also determines the number of seats in the U.S. House of Representatives and electoral college votes for each state. All Greensboro residents should participate regardless of age, race, or citizenship status. According to NC Counts Coalition, North Carolina could lose $16,000 in federal funding over a 10-year period for each North Carolina resident who is not counted in the 2020 census. There are three easy ways to complete the census, online, by phone, and by mail. You will be asked to fill out the census questionnaire online, on the phone, or on paper as in the past. From March 12th through March 20th, the majority of Guilford County households will receive a postcard invitation to respond online to the 2020 census. If you haven't done so by the second week of April, you will be sent a reminder letter and a paper census questionnaire to return in the mail. For more information about the census, please visit the city's website. The City of Greensboro's comprehensive plan draft called GSO 2040 is available for review on the city's website. Residents are encouraged to share input on GSO 2040 by completing a short survey before February 28th. The planning department's process for updating the comprehensive plan included public input and conversations, as well as current data about Greensboro and consideration of existing plans of city departments and community partners and a review of trends affecting cities across the country. A comprehensive plan is a city's overarching guide to growth and development, and its policies are a roadmap to guide the community to a shared vision of the future. Some of the key issues identified during the process include offering more options for housing and neighborhoods. Approximately 67% of residents live in one or two person households, and the majority want more walkable places to live, providing better access to services, recreation, and work. People want more choices for how to get from place to place and not to be solely reliant on cars. Finally, how we work and shop will continue to change as technology evolves, which will impact businesses. To review the GSO 2040 draft document, please visit the city's website. The Guilford County Register of Deeds is participating and partnering with North Carolina A&T State University and UNCG to present a new 11-week community interview series on the slave deeds of Guilford County. Local educators and community leaders will share their knowledge, insights, and the importance of slave deeds research taking place in Guilford and 25 other North Carolina counties. Each week, a new interview will be posted on social media covering many themes related to understanding dynamics surrounding the institution of slavery. Guilford County has researched more than 400 bills of sale of enslaved people, searchable online as a resource for historians, genealogists, and the public. UNCG's People Not Property Project is digitizing slave deed records with the goal of creating a comprehensive searchable statewide database coordinated by Dr. Claire Heckel. Videos will be posted on Fridays on the following social media platforms. UNCG's People Not Property Project is supported by a three-year grant from the National Historic Publications and Records Commission. For more information, visit the Guilford County Register of Deeds website. In an effort to help each of us improve our quality of life, the city has partnered with Cone Health for a series of brief and informative videos designed to inspire you to make better choices when it comes to healthy living. Let's check in with our friends at Cone Health for today's News for Your Health. With one in eight women estimated to be diagnosed with breast cancer within their lifetime, it's important for women to understand their risks. So let's bust some common breast cancer myths. Myth, deodorant can cause breast cancer. So why do people think this? Aluminum is the active ingredient in deodorants. These plug the sweat ducts that stops the flow of sweat to the skin's surface. It's been suggested that aluminum may have direct harmful activity in breast tissue. 
However, no studies to date have confirmed this. Some research is focused on parabens, which are preservatives used in deodorants and antiperspirants that mimic estrogen in the body's cells. There is no evidence that parabens cause breast cancer. In fact, most deodorants in the United States do not currently contain parabens. Myth, the only sign of breast cancer is a lump. Although the most common sign of breast cancer is a lump, there are other signs of breast cancer too. Less common signs and symptoms include breast pain or heaviness, persistent changes such as swelling, thickening, or redness of the skin, and nipple abnormalities such as spontaneous discharge, especially if it's bloody, erosion or retraction along with a change in breast size. Any persistent change in the breast should be evaluated by a physician as soon as possible. Breast cancer can only be inherited. Most women who develop breast cancer do not have a family history of the disease. Only five to 10% of breast cancer is related to genetic abnormalities. So the rest of us are at normal risk for getting breast cancer, which is 12.4% in our lifetimes, or the one in eight statistic we all talk about. Myth, young women don't get breast cancer. In 2017, 7% of women under 40 were diagnosed with a form of breast cancer. Women who are diagnosed under age 40 have worse survival rates than those who are older, so self-breast awareness is key, and seeing your doctor if you know any changes in your breasts immediately is crucial. What is self-breast awareness? Self-breast awareness is being aware of your breasts, how they both look and feel, and reporting any changes promptly to your physician. Myth, mammograms cause cancer. The radiation emitted from a mammogram is minimal and is less than an x-ray. Mammography reduces the risk of dying from breast cancer by about 20%. Early detection of breast cancer by mammography also leads to a greater range of treatment options, including less extensive surgery and the use of chemotherapy with fewer serious side effects, or sometimes, the option to forego chemotherapy altogether. Myth, there's no way to lower my breast cancer risk. Yes, there is. Get moving. Postmenopausal breast cancer risk is about 1.5 times higher in overweight women and about two times higher in obese women than in lean women. Women who get regular physical activity have a 10 to 20% lower risk of breast cancer compared to women who are inactive. Eat healthy, a diet rich in fruits and vegetables and limited in processed meats and red meats is key. Limit alcohol if you drink at all. Women who have two to three alcoholic drinks per day have a 20% higher risk of breast cancer compared to women who do not drink. Avoid tobacco. A review by the American Cancer Society researchers found that women who initiated smoking before the birth of their first child had a 21% higher risk of breast cancer than women who never smoked at all. Myth, men don't get breast cancer. Breast cancer in men is rare, accounting for less than 1% of breast cancer cases in the United States. However, since 1975, this number has been on the rise. Men are more likely than women to be diagnosed with advanced stage breast cancer, which likely reflects decreased awareness and delayed detection because screening mammography is not recommended for men due to the rarity of the disease. Thanks for joining me. I hope this information has been helpful. To learn more about cancer care at Cone Health Cancer Center, go to conehealth.com cancer. I'm Lindsay Causey. The Greensboro Police Department wants to hear from residents who have concerns about safety in their neighborhoods. We'll have that story and more news coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. The Greensboro Police Department is hosting a series of community meetings to allow residents a forum to share ideas about how to make their neighborhoods safer. Chief Brian James sees this as a way to directly connect residents with senior leaders of the police department who serve their neighborhoods. 
The meetings offer residents and business owners an opportunity to ask questions, voice concerns, and share ideas on how to partner with police to address those issues. The meetings scheduled in February and March will begin at 6.30 p.m. and end at 8 p.m. The meetings will take place at recreation centers and libraries across the city. For more information or questions about the community meetings, call GPD's Office of Community Engagement at 336-373-2636. The Greensboro Youth Council, or GYC, is now accepting applications from teens who are interested in leading and serving their community as an executive board member or a community event chair. The application deadline is Monday, March 9th. Becoming a board member or coordinating an event are excellent opportunities for teens who want to develop their time management and public speaking skills while networking with other teens in Guilford County. These leadership roles can make earning service learning hours fun. Most volunteers earn more than 80 hours each year. For more information about the available positions, visit the GYC website and click on the Service Learning and Leadership Opportunities page or call 336-373-2734. The Greensboro Coliseum will set the backdrop for Janet Jackson's Black Diamond World Tour this summer. Tickets are currently on sale through LiveNation.com. The tour will feature an all-new production featuring her new music from highly anticipated forthcoming album Black Diamond, set for release this year. Jackson will be performing songs from her 12 multi-platinum albums, including a special performance of Rhythm Nation 1814, which recently marked its 30th anniversary. Produced by Live Nation, the tour kicks off on June 24th in Miami and will visit major cities across the U.S. and Canada, including the Greensboro Coliseum on Sunday, July 5th. Janet Jackson is one of the most influential entertainers of the modern era. She has received accolades as an actress, published author, dancer, business person, and philanthropist. This show is one of many programs produced by GTN. Coming up after the break, we'll introduce you to the station manager. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. Greensboro Television Network is the official channel for the city of Greensboro. Joining me now to tell us about programming and how the channel has evolved is David Brown. He is the station manager of the Greensboro Television Network. Hello, David. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you. Always nice to bring folks from behind the scenes in front of the camera, so thank you for doing that. Sure. How long have you been with the city? And tell us, what was GTN like in the early days? I've been with the city for almost 24 years. Um, originally, it was Channel 13, and we were um, headquartered in the balcony of the council chamber. Wow. Now, yeah. if folks aren't familiar with our studio, which is where we're now taping this show, it's a huge facility. You have multiple offices, so it's certainly grown over the years. It has originally in the in the balcony of the chamber, we had maybe two or three racks of equipment, but now we've got a whole room full of equipment yeah. um, and uh, everything. Master Control Center. Master Control, and everything has been in the same spot now for about 23 years. Wonderful. Now, tell me about programming and the team, like it takes a team to put all of the things on the air that we show on GTN. Absolutely. Um, last year we produced uh, just over 200 shows. Uh, we have everything from cooking shows like uh, Gate City Flavor to uh, talk shows, news shows like this, uh, of course council meetings, zoning meetings, um, police graduations, fire graduations. A okay. huge variety. So we run the gamut. And I like how with GTN, we are government, and it is a government access channel, but we go out into the community and really spotlight businesses, individuals, and kind of sure. show what Greensboro has to offer. Yeah, everything from um, uh, Greensboro businesses, local businesses that we highlight, um, that you host. Um, we try and spread out and do a little more than government programming and show everything that's going on within uh, the city. And I noticed uh, recently you have a talk show, and that's separate from this being a newscast, more of a news format, mm -hmm. but Gate City Insider. Tell us about that. 
Yeah, that's a talk show with our host, uh, Rosemary Plyben, and, and uh, she hosts uh, guests from, it could be from city departments, uh, it could be business leaders, community leaders. Um, she covers all sorts of topics. Nice, and then now we want to actually showcase all the great food that we have in Greensboro, mm -hmm. and that's Skate City Flavor? Yeah, Skate City Flavor, uh, we started that a few months ago. Um, so we travel around to local restaurants and highlight their signature dish. And there is lots of great food in Greensboro, I can attest to that. Now, there are other aspects of GTN that have really kind of embraced technology, if you will. So this is primarily a cable formatted channel, but now we've gone beyond the realm of that. That's right, yeah. Um, as of November um, last year, we got on to the Roku system and currently we have about 227 subscribers. So anybody with a Roku box can now watch our channel. Uh, we stream uh, 24 hours a day on, um, on the website and uh, we try and reach out in multiple platforms. We'll send out videos uh, via Nextdoor and Twitter and Facebook. So we're everywhere. Exactly, and Alexa knows who we are too. Alexa does know who we are. <laughs> So we do a um, briefing, if you will, like a news briefing, and people who have that device can access. Yes, we update the flash briefing uh, every Monday, and that's good from Monday through Friday, and then the following Monday we'll do a new one. Okay, so where, if people are still accessing us through cable, how do they get GTN Beyond Spectrum? Uh, Beyond Spectrum, we're also on North State, Channel 31. Uh, we're also on AT&T UVerse, Channel 99. Um, and then all the streaming, uh, Roku, the website, and uh, various platforms. Okay, well thank you David, you do a great job, you and your team of sure. producing hundreds of programs a year, and it's a pleasure to work with you every day, and thanks for coming great. in and showcasing our great TV channel. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Stay tuned for some useful information about Greensboro as we tell you something about the city. That's coming up after the break, stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. One way to stay informed about decisions that impact our city is by attending or tuning in to city council meetings at 5.30 p.m. on the first and third Tuesday of the month. The fourth Tuesday is reserved for a meeting as needed. The Greensboro City Council meetings are open to the public, but if you cannot make it to City Hall, we broadcast the meetings right here on GTN. The meetings are also streamed live on the city's website and on Roku. City Council meetings take place on Level 2 of the Melvin Municipal Office Building located at 300 West Washington Street. To review the Council meeting schedule and agendas, please visit the city's website. Here's an opportunity to learn a little something about the city. The Adaptive and Inclusive Recreation Division is accepting registrations for Camp Joy, an inclusive day camp for residents age 5 and older. Camp Joy provides a traditional camp experience with arts and crafts, swimming, and other activities. The camp runs between June and August. A blended mobility week for individuals with physical disabilities will be offered July 13th through 17th. Campers will be allowed to bring a personal assistant. Camp Joy costs $65 per week. Registration applications are available on the city's website. For more information about other summer camp programs hosted by Parks and Recreation, visit the city's website. For more information about Camp Joy, contact Sharon Williams with Parks and Recreation at 336-373-2954. Coming up after the break, we'll showcase our department spotlight. But first, prepare to mark your calendar for all the great events happening this week on the town. Hey, this is Lana. There's a lot to do this weekend, so let's get started. On Friday, head over to The Crown at the Carolina Theater for some live music featuring Magnolia Green with Farewell Friend and Ashley Virginia and The Herd. Get ready for some of the best soul, roots rock, Americana, and alt folk you'll hear in the triad. The show begins at 8 p.m. 
For more information or to purchase tickets, visit carolinatheater.com. Now through Saturday, come out and support your community with Greensboro Beautiful's Winter Wipeout. Litter is so much more visible during the winter months on exit ramps, at intersections, in ditches, along railroad tracks, around shopping centers, in creeks and streams, all along wooded areas. Winter Wipeout is an opportunity to clean it up when it's more visible and more accessible. For more information on the cleanup, visit GreensboroBeautiful.org. On Saturday, come to the Greensboro History Museum to celebrate Great Leap of Faith Day. Join the museum for performances from community groups highlighting our city's diversity. Visit the Smithsonian traveling exhibition, American Democracy, A Great Leap of Faith, and learn about the 2020 census and why it's important that everyone in Greensboro gets counted. There will also be games, videos, crafts, and other activities. Visit greensborohistory.org for more information. On Sunday, Post Malone is performing at the Greensboro Coliseum. A Diamond Certified Grammy Award nominated phenomenon, artist Post Malone regularly rewrites history, blurs boundaries, and incites internet breaking conversation with every move. Post Malone's Runaway Tour is also featuring Swa Lee and Tyla Yahweh. For more information, visit GreensboroColiseum.com. Mark your calendars for the 12th annual dance production of Let My People Go, presented by The Point Studio of Dance in association with Elise Jonel Performance Ensemble. The show's on Saturday, March 7th at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m., and on Sunday, March 8th at 3 p.m. The production is an all-dance interpretation of the 1998 DreamWorks movie, The Prince of Egypt. For more information about the show, visit letmypeoplego2020.eventbrite.com. Keep watching FYI Weekly right here in GTN to find out about more events happening on the town. Welcome back. The City of Greensboro has more than 20 departments and several divisions committed to serving you, our residents and visitors. Let's go behind the scenes in our department spotlight. Greensboro Transit Agency, or GTA, has linked Route 7, which runs along Friendly Avenue, to Wesley Long Hospital. This will benefit commuters traveling for medical appointments and those who work at the hospital. A Cone Health shuttle is operating on a coordinated schedule to meet inbound and outbound arrivals of GTA Route 7. Riders can transfer to the free shuttle for first and last mile service, stopping at the main hospital entrance and the North Elam Medical Plaza. The shuttle is available from 7 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. on Monday through Friday and will meet bus arrivals at 10 and 40 minutes after each hour. Straight ahead on the other side of the break is this week's Way to Go GSO shout out. Stay with us. As we draw to a close, we always want to end on a positive note with our Way to Go GSO shout out. This week's shout out goes to the Habitat for Humanity. The agency partnered with the City of Greensboro and Mount Zion Baptist Church to dedicate a home for a couple whose previous home was demolished by the tornado that struck East Greensboro in 2018. Kinley and Yolanda Harris contributed sweat equity in the construction process. City Council member Sharon Hightower offered support and encouragement from day one. Volunteers from Mount Zion's Dream Team assisted with the building. All those in attendance recited the Litany of Dedication led by Bishop Brian Pierce, pastor of Mount Zion Baptist Church. That concludes this edition of FYI Weekly, but you can easily stay connected to the latest city news by linking to us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Alexa users can subscribe to our five-minute flash briefings. Be sure to download our weekly podcast, Talk City Greensboro. And now, GTN is streaming on Roku. For all of us here at the City of Greensboro, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.